It's for Jen. <laughs> it's a nice time of day. You know, my early mornings are sometimes a little bit challenging in the sense that I want to get so much started that I don't take the time to sit still like I share so much in these videos and devotionals to be still and know that God is in control. But my stillness comes in when I begin to open my mouth. You know, it's almost as though suddenly I go, okay, good, I get to kick back in my mind and sit back and watch what God's going to say because it's His devotionals and it's His way and it's His word and He's going to speak and I just get to listen. And I'm always amazed that my stillness and sometimes the the words themselves aren't my own but they're god who owns me speaking through this vessel that i get to listen and participate in a lot of ways of learning as it's being spoken the same things that are coming out of my mouth it's like being like you you see these phony seances and these phony mediums and they're going and they suddenly go into some trance and become like they're not themselves and somebody else. Well, God doesn't do it that way. <laughs> God inhabits you and your personality, as well as it has done in the scripture, influences some of what is presented. There is a person who is recording the scriptures. And so when we say that the word is infallible, we simply mean that God by his Holy Spirit allowed if there are fallibility to be in there so that it would be infallible because it is purposed to be there for his design the same way in the sense that he uses you to accomplish his will by using an infallible by using a fallible vessel that you are to speak through so that the good that comes is always from god and the rest <laughs> is probably you talking and not him so in spurgeon we get to a place where we get to enjoy listening to what God has spoken through this man as well as what he would say to us. So, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge. 2 Peter 1, 5, 6. If thou wouldst enjoy the eminent grace of the full assurance of faith under the blessed Spirit's influence and assistance, do what the scripture tells you. Give diligence. Take care that your faith is of the right kind, that it is not a mere belief of doctrine, but a simple faith, depending upon Jesus and on Jesus alone. Give diligent heed to your courage. Plead with God that he would give you the face of a lion, that you may with consciousness of right go on in your life boldly. Study well the scriptures and get knowledge. For a knowledge of doctrine will tend very much to confirm faith. Try not to, or try to understand God's word. Let it dwell in your heart richly. Ask him for wisdom, and he will give it to you. When you have done this, add to your knowledge temperance. Take heed to your body. Be temperate without. Take heed to your soul. Be temperate within. Get temperance of lip, life, heart and thought. Add to this by God's Holy Spirit, patience. Ask him to give you that patience that endures affliction, that which, when it is tried, shall come forth as gold. Array yourself with patience, that you may not murmur nor be depressed in your afflictions. When that grace is won, look forward to godliness. Godliness is something more than religion. Godliness makes God's glory your object in life. Live in His sight. Dwell close to Him. Seek for fellowship with Him. And you have, then, godliness. And add to that brotherly love. Have a love to all the saints. And add to that a charity or love which opens its arms to all men and loves their souls, if not their flesh. When you are adorned with these jewels, and just in proportion as you have practiced these heavenly virtues, will you come to know by clearest evidence your calling and election? Then your calling and election would be made sound and sure and confirmed by the very fact of which you are, as opposed to what you say. Give diligence if you would get assurance, for lukewarmness and doubting 
very naturally go hand in hand. You know, there is such a thing as belligerent faith. It's funny because of all the faiths that are described, you never hear someone say belligerent faith. And the reason is, is because more often than not, people like to get carried away with what they want to say as opposed to what God said. So they go off over a cliff of their own making by doing more than what God said to do, by adding words to the scripture, by purposely exaggerating those things that God has done, that God has said, and that God intended for his people. Temperance is a mellowing out of that exaggeration to bring it back into confirmation of his word. Temperance means to balance it out, to weigh it in the scales and find it perfectly even because God's scales are just, or in this case, temperate. They're even for the good and for the evil. So be careful when you get faith as a motivation for what you're doing because it's too easy to get carried away in your faith but give diligence to your faith to make sure that you're found in that with which Paul was describing in balancing out all so you can come to godliness and find within it as God is living in you love for your brethren because when you don't have love for your brethren it's very easy to take your finger and rather than use it for what it was designed for which is to grasp things wind up pointing at things with which it was never purposed and in that we need to allow God to teach us the wisdom because it's too easy to point at everyone else except ourselves give diligence to your faith and be temperate in all things Thank <laughs> you.